the signing, the signing. So if you've watched my channel for a lot for a while, go back to I think it was FM eighteen. I did a lead save. It was seventeen or eighteen. I forget. I signed this guy, and I've tried to sign him every version since, and I can't afford him. <laughs> Okay, we are going to take a look at this because this is brand new, I think. But let's see, I haven't seen this before. So the new arrivals, we didn't sign many new players, relied on our existing squad. But we brought in Curtis Jones and Christo on loan. Curtis Jones, they were pleased. Christo was very pleased, didn't play very much, and honestly didn't perform when we did bring him in. He played 10 matches. Season results, mid-table, we finished 12th. 86% attendance uh, in the stadium. 12 goals for Rodrigo, board confidence C+. As you can see, we kind of fell off the pace. And taking a look at the schedule, after that Burnsley win uh, or draw, we... Fell to Liverpool 1-0, lost to Wolves 1-0, and that was heartbreaking. Then we stunned Arsenal 5-3 and then drew with Crystal Palace. So, kind of stumbled down the end. Biggest win was a 3-0 win over Grimsby. Really? That was our biggest win? Match to remember, 2-1 win over Tottenham. I thought that might have been our biggest win. And goal of the season was Phillips. Uh, from 22 yards out in a 4-2 win over Villa. Finances, still national reputation, no new sponsorship deals. We did make $32 million, I think, from our place finishing. Oh, no, I'm sorry, $22 million in competition money. And we'll look at finances and stuff in a minute. Okay, so this is where the jersey sales and stuff comes in. That's cool. That is very cool. All right, so they've kind of lumped all this into a walkthrough. I like it. I like it. Rodrigo, our number one selling jersey. Phillips, Dallas, Helder Costa, and Rafinha were our top five selling jerseys. 2.4 million in merchandise sales, 16,000 jerseys. Meslier played a 702. 685 for Ailing. Cock and Cooper played at sevens or better. Very good. Dallas and Forshaw. Forshaw was not a regular for us. Sorry, he only played 11 matches. Uh, Calvin Phillips was our deep lot defensive mid, so I don't know why it moved him up. Shackleton, I was pretty happy with him this year. Uh, four goals, two assists on, to end the season. Rafinha, really liked his performance. Jack Harrison, no goals. And, you know, he spent a lot of time injured. And Rodrigo ended up with 15 goals and four assists. So there you go. Accolades, uh, nothing for me. Player of the season, here we go. This is So this is the awards all rolled into one. I do like this. Uh, Calvin Phillips, Robin Cock, young player of the season. Calvin Phillips, the goal of the season. Top goal scorer with 12 is Rodrigo. Elioski with eight assists. Maybe I should have played him more. How much did he play? Yeah, 19 and 7. I mean, he played a good bit. All right, well, if you hit on a player, I don't know how to get back. I had to go through the whole thing again to get here. Uh, but let's see. Rodrigo, four player of the match, and average rating was Calvin Phillips, 706, and some change. Record breakers, most overall goals by a player in a season was 15. Alioski with 10 assists. Meslier, 9 shutouts. Rodrigo, 5 players of the match. And Calvin Phillips, 11 yellow cards for the worst discipline. So that is good. Ancelotti is fired by Everton. And you can see I'm 17-2 to two to uh, be in the sack race. Liverpool's Jurgen Klopp. Uh, also, 10 to 11. Wow. Where did they finish? They finished third. They finished on even points. They lost on goal differential. That's it. You would fire Klopp for that? That would be so stupid. <laughs> that, would be, that would be stupid, stupid. You know? 
Uh, let's see. All right, so club vision for next year. Mid-table, next season. All right, we'll accept that. Discuss our plans. So a few players are downcast. Berardi's leaving. We'll take a look at that, too. I'm aiming for a mid-table. All right, Calvin Phillips says, Come on, guys, the boss is right. We can get a mid-table finish. They're all satisfied or pleased. Um, pump fist, that's the sort of reaction. That's the kind of ambition I want to see from a head coach. We'll secure it. Uh, we'll talk about promises. Ooh, they're downcast and pessimistic. All right, so maybe you ought to do promises. Maybe? Wow. I thought everybody was very happy up until the promises point. Weird. All right, so I'll have to remember that for next year or moving forward. Klopp was fired by Liverpool. <laughs> Can you believe that? He finishes even on points. And they're looking at Ancelotti, who just got sacked as well. Frank Lampard, 7-2 to two to get sacked. Chelsea finished. God. I mean, you know, granted they're not going to Champions League, but they're going to Europe. Liverpool's in the Champions League. I think that's just so ridiculous. So ridiculous. All right, let's take uh, let's take a look at finances. So we have done we haven't gotten our budget yet. That's one thing we have not gotten. But you can see we have uh, climbed to sixty two million dollars uh, from thirty six million with the winnings of where we finished, and we've made solid money every month about two million dollars. So we're actually losing about five million in payroll. But we are picking up some new players, so we're going to be back up to 55 million. And next season's minimum guaranteed budget is 30 million. And we have 75% of our transfer revenue available. So, depending on what the payroll looks like, I don't think we want to go much higher than we were this year. We're at 53, so we're going up two, which means we'll be breaking even every month. So we could lose we could lose one or two million a month and still with a mid-table finish still make money. I think that's going to be the route to go. So we'll see probably going to sell a few players. That typically happens. Uh let's see. If we take a look by position, I wanted to see when their contract ran out. Oh, well, we'll play around with that. But um, I think Meslier has, let's see, he played 62 goals. That's a lot. Eight shutouts, but he played a seven. If we could upgrade there, possibly do that, and then make him our reserve, that might be the way to go. But he doesn't look horrible. So I think he's going to stay our starter. Might need to bring in somebody a little better as a reserve. Maybe, you know, someone, maybe a little an aging veteran or something that's on cheap. Um, maybe. I think Cooper may have run his course. But he's not horrible. But he may be a guy that we can let go. Urente and Kosh, I think, are going to be our starters back there in the central mid next year. Berardi's going to be gone. Oh, I'd like to move him. He, uh, Boy, we brought back, but he's out for all of next season with an ACL, I believe. Yeah, cr a yeah ACL injury. So he's out for the year. Uh, so can't do anything with him. Stroik, I think, is coming up young. Same with Drama. Alioski, I think we could move on. Now, he did very well, but I think we could sell him. He's valued at $11 million. I think we could move him, get some money. And I think we we just have enough options at wing, at, at wing, I think. The only thing is, if we do move him, we probably need to bring in some depth at left back. Because we really... Berardi's going to be gone. Drama, I... Drama might be able to come in and be cover there. 
Leaf Davis, I think, could make the step up. Those guys could be in the rotation. Dallas is still going to be over there. Now, Dallas is 30, but I think Dallas is one of those guys, unless I get a really good offer for him, I won't look to move him. I think Forshaw I might look to move. Click. Can I move him? I think I could. I could be convinced. I like Click in real life, though, boy. Paveda needs to make the step up. Curtis Jones will be gone. Rodrigo will be the focus next year. Harrison, I don't know how to tell. See, we've got an optional future fee, but I don't know if I want to waste the money on him there. I like him. Rafinha, I might move Bamford, and I love Bamford a lot. I mean, he's, he's one of my favorite players. In fact, my jersey, my kit that I got this year is a Bamford jersey. Tyler Roberts can go. He's young, but he can go. Sam Greenwood could take his place. Christo's going to be leaving. And I think Edmondson can go as well. So there's a few guys we might be able to make a little bit of money on. So I'll take a look at that. Uh, so let's do that real quick, and we'll come back. Leadership support, cohesion's there. Now, if I get rid of Cooper, we're going to keep Dallas and Ailing, and I would expect, hopefully, Shackleton or Phillips to step up into that role. And then, you know, I think Rodrigo's a little old for me getting into that, but that would make him a leader, I'm sure. But I'd like Phillips up there. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll just play around with that. But, guys, we'll be right back with uh, some news. All right. Just wanted to go through some of these emails. So, Rodrigo, I don't think these are real records because they're only for this year, right? So, unfortunately, they're not real records. All right. There's our initial budget. We had two players called up for the Europa under-21, Shackleton and Stroik. We also had quite a few players. Uh, Meslier, Klitsch, Bogic, Bamford, Rodrigo, and Roberts were called up for the European Championships uh, in their groups, and they're all in the same group. Oh, that's rough. All right, so initial budgets. It said it was a minimum of 30 million, 66.8 million, and a $71 million payroll budget. Ooh, nice. All right, so committed spending is 45. So we've got 25 million in payroll and 66 million in transfer. All right, well, let me go get busy because now I got some shopping money. All right, so let's get into it. We are at August 8th, debut game today for the second season, and probably, in all likelihood, the final season of the beta save. And, oh, my God, I am so excited about some of the transfer news today. So excited. I can't wait to show you guys. Uh, first off, we're just going to kind of go through and take a look. So being that this is a transfer special, we are going to probably run a little long today. But we are projected to finish mid-table, 10th position. So we're good there. If we take a look at uh, key players in the league, we have uh, Dominic Grief, who's a name that you won't recognize, from Slovakia, I believe. Yep, Slovakia. And Rodrigo, our Spanish number nine. And I believe that's all that we're going to have in there. I think they only put two per club. Uh, there's been a $1.4 billion in spending, $176 million for Man City, Brighton with 4.62 uh, lowest net transfer spins. And we'll get into that. want to take a look at Dynamics. And the hierarchy, you can see our top influencers, Stuart Dallas and Calvin Phillips. Uh, Johnny Alioski is unhappy to have been touted. And he's been throwing a hissy fit. We tried to sell him. And he just won't get over it. 
uh, not at all. Nobody offered for him. And he's been pitching a fit. He's been having subpar training. I think I'm going to stick him into U23s and just let him rot uh, if nobody comes in for him. Taking a look at the hierarchy, we have had a shift at the top. We'll go into transfers on that. But Stuart Dallas uh, remains one of our team leaders. Calvin Phillips and Mateus Click move into that team leader role. And Shackleton now a highly influential player as well as uh, some of the old stalwarts there as well. Finance-wise, we still have $12 million in the transfer budget and about $3 million left in payroll, but I don't think we're going to sign anybody else. Um, and we'll go over a couple of guys because it's, you know, I ran some science experiments because I wasn't sure how they would work, so to try to help you guys out as well. Uh, let's kind of look at some of these guys. Um, we have we have uh, Bastos. Uh, there's there was an issue with work permits. So when you make an offer, let's let's just go in and pick a player at random, right? Not schedule scouting. Let's just pick a player at random. So this guy is from Belgium. Let's pick somebody from Brazil. Here we go. So Marcal. If we make an offer, you get you get things like this. Can't now I don't know how true this is because I signed two guys and I was able to register them because we're not at the end of the transfer window or you know yet, and registration is still open unless this is something with a transfer. But these all came immediately. I've got a couple of guys like this. But I don't want to make an offer on him. But when you go to do your contract, you'll get a red bar that will show that they won't qualify for a work permit. You might get it on this screen. Uh, let's just look at somebody else. Well, can't find one, but that's okay. I went ahead and signed like three guys. A couple of other uh, international or foreign players I rejected. Uh, and but I did want to just see what would happen. I did sign them. You get the email, and the first email says that they've been rejected for a work permit. And then the very next email is that do you want to you know finalize this deal or cancel the deal? So a couple of them I finalized it, and they ended up going in like this guy. Here's a here's a perfect example. So this guy's 21 years old, Italian, three caps, but he does not qualify for a work permit. And he was going to be a starting midfielder for me, first choice. And can't register him. Can't register him because he doesn't qualify for a work permit. I said, you know, he's got 15 under 21s. He's only 21. He actually has three full internationals. He's got the ratings doesn't qualify for whatever reason, and I don't understand work permits. So I've got to sell him, and that sucks. I mean, we paid $24 million for him, and he was going to be first choice for me. So not sure what exactly is going on there, but we had a few of them. Uh, this is another guy, uh, Christian Lavrick. Uh, he was going to be high choice for me. Now, I knew he didn't have any caps, but his ratings were real good. And I said, yeah, well, this is a guy I took a flyer on just to see what it would do. And, yep, can't register them at all. So I'm going to have to sell them at a loss. So do yourself a favor. If you get that little warning about a work permit, don't gamble on it. Just move on to someone else. With that being said, let's take a look at our transfer history. $42.5 million coming in, $49.5 million going out. One of the things I noticed, so SI has said that the initial year, the first year, would be very limited due to, to, to mimic or to mirror the coronavirus pandemic and that it would regulate itself back to normal over time. So we had a very good, very healthy transfer budget, but I did notice that there were not many people coming in on my players for bid. Uh, at least not at the elevated prices that I would have expected. They were all low balls for the most part. So take that for what it will. 
Uh, we'll see if that, you know, I guess once we get into the full release and our next save, a couple of years in, we'll see if that has regulated itself out. All right, let's kind of go through these. Uh, the loans I'm not going to go into. Uh, Rafa Mujica, we did sell for 2.6, and we had signed him uh, on... We had gotten him for a free. He had been on loan, so they signed him for $2.6 million, and that goes into the coffers. Berardi, we didn't, I didn't want to offer him a contract, but he, right at the end of the season, he kind of got pissy and said he wanted a new challenge. And I think in real life, he kind of wants to go home. So we let him go on a free. We weren't going to try to sign him. Barry Douglas's contract expired, so we let him go. Uh, Bobby Kamwa, we sell him for 16 and a quarter, up to 60,000 long term. You can see only a 27 rating, and he came up through our system. So not a lot of money to be made there. A couple of loans. Lawrence DeBach goes off for potentially 1.4 million. He just wasn't going to meet anything. Some more loans. We got an offer from Southampton. We had gotten five or six offers. I think all from Southampton on Luke Ayling, who was our captain. Hold on. We got to go back a little bit. Yes, we have to go back because I did not show you guys this at the end of the season. So Liam Cooper, we sold him to Norwich for $11.5 million. Now, he was our captain, only 29, but I think he was going to be third option this year. And... I hated to do it because he was a team leader and our captain. And I was leery, and so I was really leery. I didn't want to take all three, Stuart Dallas, Cooper, and Luke Ayling. But as soon as I sold him, Calvin Phillips jumped into, the, into that leadership role. So there was no void there. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So we sold Cooper. Ryan Edmondson went off to Birmingham for 240, Max Dean for 300,000. And those were signings. And then we brought in, uh, one, uh, let's see, quite a few of these guys. These are the guys uh, at the end of the season. So Lobrick, we got on a free and couldn't register him. Daniel Ogayoke, uh, we've got him, but he's under 18, so he's not for now. Uh, Flange, we did talk about these guys, I think. Uh, then Juan Larios for 650000 and he is a 17-year-old left back, uh, not ready to make the step up. Jack Harrison, we made his loan permanent with the option to buy, so we bought him in for $11 million. Gaston Silva, $1.7 million. He's going to be a starting left back for us. And uh, David Konaki comes in from Fortuna Dusseldorf for six point seven five. I was looking to get an upgrade at striker uh, for Bamford behind Rodrigo. Thought this guy fit the bill, and he can play wingers. So those are guys we brought in at the at the end of last season that you didn't see. Uh, so then we jumped into this, which we were talking about. Uh, Tyler Roberts out on loan. So Luke Ailing, uh, we got a bid for Luke Ailing. Now, Luke had become the club captain because he was the vice captain. And Southampton, I think they started off at about $9 million. And they eventually, uh, you know, this will go up to $32 million, And there's really nothing that we can't get there. So $32 million, I said, I can't pass on that. So we let him go. He was 29 years old. So we let him go off to Southampton, who won the championship and just got promoted. Uh, one of our reserve keepers that we just signed in real life last year or this year uh, goes off to Brentford for 3.1. Again, they were offering like 700,000 to start, and they just kept going up. And finally, at 3.1, I said, "Can't uh, I can't be bothered to turn that down?" And let's see, a couple more. You know, everything else is loans, so you can see the guys that went out. So looking at the guys we brought in. Jan Emmers from Inner. This is a guy that was a work permit issue. Again, really solid looking midfielder. Not great, but he, doing the job for us. I felt last year we were a little weak in the mid, and I thought he could come in and be an everyday player or at least in a rotation. 
got the work permit. He was very inexpensive, took a gamble on it just to see, and of course, couldn't get the work permit. So we've loaned him out to DC United, picking up his wages, uh, or we've transferred him for 400000 Uh We got Cameron Carter Vickers from Tottenham on a free center back. Uh, very solid, short, simple passes. Try, you know, so he is a ball playing defender, which we like. So he's going to be in our depth there. Good first touch passing. Uh, definitely can play back there. He's honestly one of the few guys that I know that I recognize their name. Uh, then this is a guy that we brought in. We looked at him a minute ago, Tanali, 24 million, and can't get a work permit for him. So we're gonna we're gonna have to send you know send him off. We've got him transfer listed. Now, if I can't get money back on him, I may just let him sit. I mean, it's only for this year. It's not long term. Uh, still knowing I wanted to up upgrade our striker, I brought in this guy, uh, Sebastian Walukowicz, I think. I don't know. Walkie talkie. 21 years old, uh, $14.5 million. His finishing – oh, no, I'm sorry. He's a center back. Why was I thinking striker? He's a center back again. Can do a very good job. Six foot two. I think he's a very good replacement. Much younger also than Cooper is. So he's in for the in that center back position for nine and a half. Steven Sessegnon. We brought him in on a loan. This is another player I didn't know. I, I did not know last year. I've seen him this year. Uh, well, last year and this year with Fulham. So. A player I've learned a little bit about from watching Leeds play against him. He can play all three back line positions. He's either foot, so he's going to be probably replacing Ailing at right back, keeping Dallas at left back. But if I do have someone else that can overtake him at right back, then I've got somebody that can play all three off the bench. Uh, Dominic Grief from Slovan Bratislava, 850,000. He is a really, really class-looking goalkeeper. Eight caps for Slovakia. So he is going to have a chance to come in and take the number one jersey for sure this year. Curtis Jones, I was just kind of looking for some more depth, and Liverpool had him listed for loan again. So I went ahead and pulled him back uh, from last season. So last year he only played in eight games, but he played well. <laughs> he had a couple of injury stretches, so we'll see how that goes this year. The signing. The signing. So if you've watched my channel for a lot, for a while, go back to, I think it was FM 18 I did a lead save. It was 17 or 18, I forget. I signed this guy, and I have tried to sign him every version since, and I can't afford him. I cannot afford him. Fifteen million dollars is a steal. They're usually wanting thirty plus, and you know most of the clubs I'm with, you know journeymen's and stuff, can't sniff this guy. He was a forty goal scorer for three or four years in a row for Leeds in my last save. I am so excited to get this guy. 21-year-old Frenchman, 10 under 21 caps, 7 goals in 10 matches. Valued at 19 and a half, so we came in under value on him. And he is he is incredible. He can play every position, he can play the wing. Um I'm going to put him at striker, I think, and move Rodrigo out to the wing, to the left wing cuz I want this guy playing a lot, a lot. I'm so excited to get this guy. You guys have no idea. When I tell you every version of a football manager since that save, first thing I do is I look that guy up. And I knew I couldn't afford him last season just because we didn't have any money. So he was the first player I looked up. And one of the last players that I signed. It took a while to get that deal done. But, oh, my God. So if we take a look at the team report, well, these are two stars and higher. So we're looking at Rodrigo, Guiri, Bamford. Uh, Roberts is out. So let's take loans out off. There we go. Uh, Bamford, Koenaki, 
Yeah, there's there's the oh, that's the guy we signed him last year. That's right. So you guys did see him and Greenwood. Then we're gonna looking at Rodrigo, Rafinha, Dallas, Guiri, Curtis Jones on the left, Rodrigo, Rafinha, Dallas, Costa, and Bamford on the right. Phillips, Rodrigo, Tanali's unavailable, Shackleton, Koch. And then we have to go down, click, Jones, Forshaw, Stroik, Jenkins going down the list. He's got a lot of potential, but we'll see. Uh, Phil, you know, Tanali, this is what my goal was with Tanali. Either Tanali would be a starting midfielder or Phillips would move up to the mid and Tanali would slide into the defensive mid. But that got kicked in the gonads. So now we're looking at uh, Phillips back here. Probably Shackleton. I'm thinking Shackleton and Klitsch. Probably manning the midfield with Stroik and Forshaw coming off the bench. We are pretty weak. Uh, if you're a Leeds fan, I did look up Rodrigo DePaul just for fun. Couldn't afford him. <laughs> and uh, so Dallas on the left. Uh, Alioski, Silva will be competing. Silva will get the nod over Alioski for sure. Uh, in fact, development, move to the U23 squad. I just don't even want him in the list. Uh, let's see. Leaf Davis will get some playing time there. Urente and Koch will be our regular starters. And then we will have uh, Walukowicz down there as well for depth. Silva can step in, as can Stroik and Phillips. Now, on the right side, this is where it's going to get interesting. And we do have an offer out for a player. Sessegnon is in. I, he's going to probably play. That's who my gut's telling me. But we also have Nathan Ferguson. We've got an offer out on him who can play right back, and I'm projecting him to be in that position. Weird thing is we had an offer accepted for him. It was worked out, and then they got hit with a transfer embargo due to a takeover or something and canceled the deal. Then he got mad. And then I saw they had a couple of bids on, on him. So I'm back in for him. We've got a contract offer. We'll see how that goes. But he will not be available today. So Liverpool beat Southampton in the first match of the day. Let's get into team selection. And it is... No, I want Guiri up top unless he's a fitness concern. No, he's match fit. It says he's good. So we're going to go with Guiri up top. So they've dropped a Rodrigo back. All right, Phillips here. Koch here. Let's give Sessegnon the start. Dallas on the left. Uh, I do want Grief in as my number one. Meslier may not be happy about that, but that's okay. Rafinha definitely on the right wing. I'm going to go with Shax here. And then that's going to be able to put Rodrigo out on the left. Curtis Jones can pass well. I'm going to bring Klitsch Klit on. So Klitsch, Shackleton, Phillips, that, that's familiar looking. Rodrigo's going to drop out to the wing. Now, Carter Vickers, Jones, Koenaki, Harrison, Stroik, and Bamford on the bench. Who does that leave off the bench? I'm only looking at the... Let's take off unavailable. Okay, so that doesn't leave quite as many people. Silva's injured, so he'll be in the mix. Sam Greenwood, Hel Helder Costa. Fair enough. All right, well, that's what I'm going to go with, so let's play that. We are going to need a squad number for Curtis Jones. He takes number seven. And we're the favorites here. Stuart Dallas had a lot of concerns over letting both Ailing and Cooper go. Okay, that was not a good outlet ball. Ryan Brewster knocked away. Good job. Click over the top. Oh, headed away. Tackled. Good. Shackleton. Nice ball up to Guiri. 
Oh, just off the mark. Oh, we could have had a debut goal in the fifth minute. All right, let's uh, fire up. We are controlling the match, but none on target yet. There's our first on target. Okay, let's take a look at the tactic. We're positive. I'm going to take off that. I'm going to go ahead and keep counter press on. I'm going to add distribute quickly. And we're going to take that off. Just a couple of small changes. Let's see what that does for us. All right, Rafinha plays it short to Calvin. Rafinha get oh my gosh Freeman just beat the left back there it's a one on one and he beats the keeper who was this Sessignon not not gonna get on my good side by doing that certainly not gonna get on my good side by doing that demand more. All right, Rafinha, again, plays it short. Back to Sessegnon. That gets you back in my good graces. <laughs> Just that quick. That's all you got to do. Stop people on the defense and score goals on the offense, and I'll be a very happy camper. That was a nice goal. First goal of the season for us comes from our new lone player. And halftime, 14-1 to 1 on shots. So according to this, we have been underperforming. Seven on target. We should have over a goal, and we only have the one. So uh, let's see. Encourage. We're the favorites here. Shackleton's the only one that's showing any. Uh, a couple of guys at the top. I missed that. It's a little weird still looking at the, the U instead of the list, right? Let's encourage them. No. Nope. All right. How are we looking in here? Wow, the keeper's playing a six. Holy smokes. Nobody, nobody's playing badly. All right, I want to cancel that. Okay, this is what I want to look at now. So Guiri's actually a little tired. So let's move him. He's played over a half. Let's bring Rodrigo up top. And then... We'll bring Jack Harrison in on the left wing. Rafinha, he's still doing okay. We're going to wait a little while before we pull him off. All right, uh, demand more. And I think you can do individual shouts now. Maybe not. Oh, I guess, let's see, can I do it now? Touchline shout. I guess you have to choose to do an individual touchline shout. Wow, my assistant manager wants to sub off the keeper. I just have a hard time doing that. Right? Oh, he's playing a 5-8 now, though. Yeah. All right. Robin Koch, no. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. That's harsh, but... Two shots, and he's only he's playing a below a six. Rafinha for Jones. Jones is a right footer. Yeah, we'll do that. Confirm the sub. We're not having much in the way of highlights, and of course, it's going to be a Sheffield highlight here. Oh, good clearance. Rodrigo's there. He, he's taking it out. So it beats his man and can't find the finish. Oh, he did such a good job there. Oh, that sucks. Well, I, I'm going to say that's the official first FM of the, the season. Because <laughs> we truly and got well FM'd on that one. Yeah, we deserve that one. Guiri played a 6-8. Grief, man, let's take a look at him after. 
throw the water bottle. No, nope. uh, thrash arms, point finger. All right, we'll do that. Point the finger. Yeah, we let two points get away there for sure, I believe. And are you guys as impressed as I am with the save speed? I mean, we're into the second season now, right? We're going to warn player, criticize last game. Point finger assertively. Well, we're going to beckon. So he was very happy. He took it. His morale went up. Good deal. All right, so we could do that. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode. So let me... I'm going to kind of go in right now, look at the calendar, look at how many games I project we'll be able to do or how many videos we'll be able to do <coughs> prior to the release of the full version on the 24th. And we'll, I'll try to put up probably the last episode for this will be on the 24th. And then we'll start on the 25th or 26th with the new save. Keep in mind, I, am, I do do a plus 30, uh, which if you don't know what that is, uh, take a look at last year's uh, journeyman save. But I basically simulate 30 years ahead. That's kind of my niche. That's what I do. That's a little different from most people. And I that way I wipe out all the existing players, even the youngsters, 30 years in the future, they're gone. Uh, because those 18 and 16 year olds are now 46 years old. So we we do a clean slate with uh, and it's all regens and we kind of get a you know movement in all the leagues for three decades. And then I then that's when I'll decide who I'm going to play with. Um, so just to well you know you guys can know what I'm doing as far as saves. I've announced it, but um, so it'll take a little time to get the plus 30 done. Uh, I usually set it to do that and, and let it run all night long. And we'll see, because last time it took a long time. But, uh, hey, thanks for checking this out. Let me know what you think about the transfer business we did. And is Guiri going to live up to expectations? He played a 6'8". He did have to go off for language training, so this may not be the year to expect big things from him we'll see anyway we'll talk to you next episode have a good one bye